Welcome back, everybody. Todd here. Today, I'm going to be in the workshop and I'll be building a bench. Uh, the bench will be used to go outside the front door of the cabin. I want to be able to get a cooler under it, but we really need a, a bench outside that front door so that we can sit down, kick your boots off, or if you're putting your boots on, put your foot up there and tie your boot laces, that kind of a thing. So I'm stuck inside today. It's another cold Michigan uh, February Saturday. It's like 16 degrees out. We got more snow overnight. So be a perfect day to get out and just spend some time in the shop and do a fun project, something that I have to get done anyway. So follow along and I'll show you what I got coming. We've got nine two by four by eight. And that is what we're going to be using to make this bench. Okay, I know this isn't high tech, but it's effective. So really, I'm going to need to cut my two bys, as you see there, into three different sizes. So I'm going to run the overall length of the bench, or I suppose it'd be the width, 34 inches. So I'm going to need to cut six at 34 inches. I'm going to need to take uh, 10 of them and cut them to 20 inches. That's how high I'm going to make it. It'll have a finish height of a little more than that when I put the adjustable feet on it. But so 20 inches tall and then 20 minus three and a half uh, puts it at 16 and a half. So I'll have 12 of those. And that's kind of what I'll be doing is you kind of take step one. You're going to take A, the 34-incher. You're going to lay that down, and then the two C's on each side. Then you're going to put a B, the taller one, on top of the C. And you can see how that will go over top of the A. And we'll just glue that and uh, screw it down, and that will hold in that first course. Then we're going to go ahead and repeat step one. And just kind of keep building it up course by course until we reach the end. So I'll show you what that looks like. Let's talk a minute about how I determine the size of the bench that I'm building. I really want to be able to get this cooler underneath the bench out front of the cabin. So I kind of use that as really my guide. But the other thing is I often have these black totes that we take up there too. So as it works out, the black tote and the cooler are both relatively the same size. And so that cooler, in order to clear uh, side to side, I need a little more than 24 inches. And Pretty much the same thing there on the black tote. And the cooler is going to require 16 inches to clear it. Uh, it's just a smidge under 16 inches. The tote is less than that. So as I, you know, did the math on how big the uh, bench needs to be, I took those two things into consideration in determining my height. Really, the bench is a little taller than I'd like it to be because it's going to be 20 inches. I'd really rather it be about 17 to 17 and a half, but um, 20 inches is not going to be a big deal. So, But that's how I came about uh, deciding on the sizes that I did. I've got my lumber and I've got my tools laid out. Take a quick look at some of the materials. Okay, I already mentioned that I'm using nine two by four by eight. I went ahead and clamped those together overnight just so that they stay nice and tight and straight. Uh, we'll be using obviously a, uh, a power drill and uh, driver. We're gonna use tight bond two because it's waterproof and it's great for outdoor applications for outdoor projects. Be using just a cheap foam brush to really uh, get that tight bond too, you know, painted on. Two and a half inch exterior grade screws. The screws will look like that. 
and you can use almost any screw it doesn't matter because they're going to be pretty much on the inside and it'll be all glued together ultimately we'll be putting these uh on the bottom their feet and that way you can level it out it won't be teeter-tottering and uh Obviously, you got to have a tape measure and a couple of squares. And then I'll be using my chop saw or uh, miter saw, power saw, to cut them all to length. And I'll show you that in just a second when I get to cutting. So, yeah, I mean, this is really pretty straightforward and easy project. Let's get after it. Okay, we got our 10, 20 inches here. Ten of them. We've got our 634 inch. And now let's go cut 12, 16 and a half. All right, here we go. 12 at 16 and a half. So, at least based on the math that I did on my cut list, my game plan, that should be it. I think what we'll do is try to assemble it and see if it all, if we have it right, then we'll worry about, you know, gluing it, nailing it, and screwing it. Okay, I moved some of this down, staged it so that we can go ahead and do a dry fit. So, let's do it. <coughs> Put the tall ones there, like so. Here, two more shorties. <coughs> oh, excuse me, sawdust. Tall ones. <coughs> well, I see I'm gonna have problems with the uh, tools on the wall. We can fix that. Long ones. Uh, that's right. Getting that deer in the headlight looks. Washed out. Just like that. Once we get it all evened up. There you go. So we'll, from the underside. 
On the outside, obviously, that'll get cleaned up when you actually start using a square to put it all together slowly, get it clamped and what have you. So, you know, you can see the top, the rain will be able to fall through it. It won't hold water on top. It's going to be heavy as a bear. Um, but we'll use a belt sander to clean up to even everything else once we're done. But, yeah. Okay, everybody, we're now at that point where we're going to do the assembly, and I've got everything set up, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to be using Tight Bond 2 Premium Wood Glue to glue it all together. Set that aside. I've got a cup, a cup full of it, so I'm going to set that aside for now. I've de-stacked it over there so I can kind of put it back in order now. I've got it laid out. I'm going to be using my Porter Cable 16 gauge, two and a half inch finish nails. So you're looking at a finish nail that long. So you can see how much it's going to go into the board. Obviously, inch and a half, inch and a half is three inches. So these are going to peg it together pretty good. We're going to really rely on the glue to hold this whole thing together. I thought about screwing it together with screws and all of that, but honestly, it's overkill. If this wood glue does anything even close to what it should do, we're not going to have any problems whatsoever. So that being said, let's go ahead and get it glued up. Now, I'm going to say this. This is an old bottle that I bought for the camper project. And I've got new bottles in there, but I'm using this up. It's a little gummy, but honestly, it should be just fine. I really don't think this stuff has a expired date. So we're gonna get the glue painted on there good. And then we'll pin it together. Foam brush. Always a great tool for woodworking and doing the, the glue thing. kind of boring but if we don't get it right we're gonna be in trouble so set that on there like so now I took some time before I started the camera to get this thing laid out so that our base is perfectly square And I'll check it before I nail it home. I mean, at the end of the day, this is going to be an outdoor bench for putting your feet up on to tie your boot laces to stick coolers underneath. And I mean, it's a utilitarian bench. It's not a high priced piece of furniture. So, you know, I am a bit anal when it comes to projects, but I'm also a realist and I don't like to go crazy overboard when it doesn't require it so I don't want you thinking I'm a slopper because that's really not who I am I ain't really a 
important that we start this thing out and we get square as best we can. Because if we're not squared up here, we're going to be in trouble. I like it. Moment of truth on some air. Oh, yeah, it's wiggling. I don't like the wiggle. I think I'll start it out back here. Make sure we're good on this end. Okay, so just a progress report. I've got six courses done. I'm using the 12 inch square to come around and plumb each and square each course. So we're in good shape there. I've got six more courses laid over here that have to come over and get glued. So steady as she goes. I'll be back in a few minutes with a little bit more progress. It's done. So I have a hunch that as time went on, it kind of started to walk off on the top there. We'll see. I mean, again, you're, we're talking about belt sanding to, you know, get the thing to level out good. And then we're going to put the feet on it anyway. So we'll be fine. Again, it's just an exterior and outdoor bench. But, um, you know, I want it to be done nicely. So. Uh, let me flip it over and get a look at it. Now it's time to do some belt sanding. You can see how it's just got some high spots. Get all of that. Let me get behind it here. Get all of that. Just belt sanded down so it evens it up pretty good there. So we'll go ahead and hit that up with a belt sander and I'll be back. Okay, we're ready to keep going on the bench. So let me show you what we're up to next. I've got it all sanded down, turned it upside down, put on a piece of cardboard. That way I can work on the legs, right? So over here on the workbench, here's what I'm gonna put on there for the feet. Rather than having to try to take all of these and get them completely leveled out, by belt sanding it all down perfectly straight and working with a square and all of that. You know what the easiest thing to do is? Put some feet on it. So I just went to the Home Depot, bought the leveling furniture guides. There's, you know, a four pack right there. You see them. And what it calls for is to take your drill bit here. And I've got that marked out for an inch and an eighth depth. And then you go ahead and you drill that out with a 23 64th. Yeah, that's right. Believe it or not. What do you see there? 23 64th. Got to like that. So I'm all set. I tested it out by drilling a pilot hole in just a scrap board. Then you take that plastic sleeve off of these 
you pop that in there and then this just gets screwed into it and it'll give you a foot. So what we're going to do now is come over here and figure out where we want our four feet to be placed and we'll go ahead and we'll drill those holes and install those feet. So let's go ahead and take care of that and I'll be back with you in a minute. There we have it. Feet are installed. Looking good. So next, I think we're we're done sanding it. So I think we're going to go ahead and move on to staining it up. Let's talk about the paint slash stain. I'm using bare solid cover, solid color rather, house and fence wood stain. And right there's the formula in case you're using, in case you're interested in the color. Got it at the Home Depot. I'll be applying it with that Walmart $2 brush and I'll be dumping some of it into that Sherbert pail and using that as I go. That way I don't have to use the whole gallon there. So that's the game plan. My game plan is to paint the inside of it first. That way if it's not going well or whatever, you're starting out on the inside, right? the bottom or whatever so I'll start there then I'll get her flipped over and we'll take her home so that's the game plan and I'll be back with you after I've gotten deep into it if not finished okay there's the first coat it wasn't necessarily easy but it's done you know, getting down in between there is a real bear, but went pretty good. I ended up kicking my uh, salamander on because I think when I first started, I had to be right on the bubble between high 30s and pushing barely 40 degrees. It talks about on the can, use the product between 40 degrees and 90 degrees. So I kicked the salamander on down there. And uh, that really helped thin out the product. So no big deal. And I'll just keep popping it on if I need to to help this dry. But okay, so there's uh, coat number one. And we'll be back at it with the next coat of paint. And I'll pull it out and we'll see what it looks like. It's been just about 24 hours since I put the first coat of stain on it. And it's all dry. So, you know, for now, uh, I'm going to just leave it in the sun. It's still a little bit cool out here. It's just in the 40s today. So I'll leave it to dry. Good. And in a couple of days, I'll put one more coat on and we'll be wrapped. From a material point of view, I know that I, in my takeoff, I had nine 2 by 4s but I only used seven. And I had one scrap that I used about 18 inches, so... Really, you should be able to do this with either seven 2x4s and a scrap of your own or go with uh, seven, go with six 8-footers and one 10-footer and you'll be just fine. Pretty simple project. I'm pleased with the way it turned out. Definitely uh, heavy duty, substantial. It'll hold up to the wear and tear of the guys at the camp, so I'm happy. That's going to be a wrap for this project. I appreciate you tagging along and do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll have more projects coming your way. Spring's almost here and it'll be time to head up to Turkey Camp, uh, up to our cabin and all kind of spring projects going on up there. So tag along and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks again.